Hello everybody and welcome. This is History Dude and today we will be continuing our series on the history of battle with the Battle of Issus, which occurred in November 333 BCE as part of the conquests of Alexander the Great. Now, Alexander the Great lived between 356 to 323 BCE and as the greatest general of antiquity, Alexander the Great was the son of Philip II of Macedon. Rumors that he had a hand in his father's assassination in 336 BCE are probably unfounded, but he certainly seized power with enthusiasm despite having barely reached manhood. Alexander believed in his own image as a godlike hero, descended from Achilles and destined for great deeds. Utterly ruthless and impulsive, he led from the front. After the conquest of Persia in 330, he adopted some Persian customs and incorporated Persians into his army. This, quote, orientalizing of Greek culture alienated Alexander from many of his fellow Macedonians, one of whom he murdered at a drunken banquet in 328 BCE. One of Alexander's biggest mistakes followed his victory at the Hydaspes in India in 326 BCE, when he opted to return to Persia across the desert, which turned into a death march for many of his men. Alexander died at Babylon in 323 BCE, possibly from poisoning, but more probably of a fever. Now, by the fall of 333 BCE, Alexander had conquered the Mediterranean coast of Anatolia. The Persian king Darius III set out with a large army to counter the Macedonian invasion of his territory, searching for Alexander's forces around northern Syria. In turn, Alexander, whose strategy was not to avoid battle but to seek it, was looking for the Persians. The Macedonians were advancing into Syria when they discovered that Darius's force was behind them to the northeast. Alexander turned his army around and advanced to meet the Persians. Darius was forced to fight on a narrow plain between the mountains and the sea, a location that limited the impact of his superior numbers. And here you can see an image of Darius III as depicted in a Roman mosaic. And... Here you can see the position of the Persian and the Macedonian troops between the mountains and the sea. Although Alexander's forces were stretched thin, with the phalanx in the center far shallower than the traditional Macedonian 16 ranks, he was able to extend his line from the foothills to the beach. As at Granicus, however, the Persians drew up behind a river and reinforced their position with palisades placed where the river banks were lowest. These defenses only heartened Alexander and his companion cavalry, who saw it as a sign that the Persians lacked the stomach for a fight. The battle began with Darius sending troops into the foothills in an attempt to outflank the Macedonians, but this maneuver was seen off by Alexander's archers. Alexander then seized the initiative, ordering a general advance. The infantry stepped forward in tight phalanx formation, Sarissa's their long spears, lowered in the front ranks to spear the enemy and raised in the back ranks to ward off missiles. Alexander, who had positioned himself on the right of his line with the companion cavalry, led the charge across the river into a combined force of heavily armored Persian cavalry and light infantry. On the beach on his left, Alexander's Thessalian horsemen and the Persian cavalry ran into one another at the charge. The Macedonian infantry was soon in trouble. Fording the river, they lost formation, and gaps began to open in the bristling wall of Sarissus, allowing Darius's Greek mercenary foot soldiers to get in among their opponents. But on the right, the shock effect of the Macedonian cavalry was irresistible. Carrying all before them, Alexander and the companions were able to swing left, driving into the Persian flank. The Greek mercenaries, pressing forward in the center, faced encirclement. Darius himself came under threat and... As the Macedonian cavalry fought their way towards him, he fled the battlefield. When the defeat of the Persian army was complete, Alexander tried to hunt Darius down, but, although his wife, mother, and children were taken prisoner, the Persian king escaped to fight again. And now, here you can see a Roman mosaic showing Darius fleeing in his chariot as Alexander, to the left, spears a Persian horseman. The long spears in this scene were a feature of the Macedonian phalanx. The artist has, rightly or wrongly, attributed them to Darius's Greek mercenary infantry. And that is about it for the Battle of Issus. I hope you have found this educational and enjoyable. 
As always, this has been History Dude, and remember to have an awesome day.